So I'm Uma Gorthi. I'm a research scientist at the SETI Institute, and I work on how stars and planets form, and more specifically on these disks that surround them and uh, how they lead to the formation, the birth of stars and planets. The Most of my work is actually uh, theoretical, so it's computational in nature mostly. And I work, but I work with a lot of observers and um, sort of try to interpret what we see by various telescopes. My background is physics, and I really liked in astrophysics, um, and particularly the field of star and planet formation, how there were all these processes and different kinds of physics, you know, like this magnetic fields, this turbulence, this fluid flows, uh, this radiation, of course, gravity, and uh, in many different things that come together to produce these stars and planets. And because there are all these different processes working, it's not very intuitive. Like you can't really, you know, sort of, uh, because they kind of interact in very complex ways and that makes it you know sort of a very interesting puzzle to solve and also because you're solving one one problem and you know you get to sort of work in all these different sub areas if you will and that's kind of what got me into it Ah, so it has to do with actually the very first two terms of the Drake equation. So that is the rate at which stars form in the galaxy. So that is the star formation part of it. So because that's the very first thing, you know, what is the rate at which um, you, you know, how material in the, in, in, the, in the molecular clouds in the galaxy. So this is basically material in between stars, which is mostly hydrogen how it collapses and forms um, stars. And this is, it turns out it's not a very efficient process. It just happens in like a few percent efficiency or something like that. And so this is sort of, this is a, this is the very first term that we need to understand, you know, so how do stars form? And then the second step, which is like, once you form the stars, then, you know, which of those form planets? And so that is, so planet formation is tightly linked to star formation because they happen sort of simultaneously. And so that is the next step in the Drake equation. So this my, so my work has to do with the very first two terms um, in the equation. We currently actually do not understand much about stars and planet formation. And in fact, what's happened is that in recent years, we've collected more data with telescopes like Kepler and TESS and, you know, radial velocity surveys. And we kind of found that, you know, what we thought earlier, which was that our solar system was kind of a typical, uh, you know, kind of uh, planetary system we will be looking for is totally not true. So we, the exoplanetary systems out there seem to be completely different from our uh, planetary system. So we really have, you know, we had built these theories of star and planet, planet formation trying to explain uh, how our solar system came to be. But now that has all been upended. So I think that there's plenty that's left to be discovered. And I'm quite sure that as we discover uh, more, more phenomena, have new facilities, the it is only going to get more complicated because you know we are we, we like almost most of the time we find things we don't expect to see so like when we're looking at disks for example we found that you know planet formation seems to happen much earlier than people thought before like this is when you know the, when the disk environment is completely enshrouded in material whereas uh, you know before this it was thought that you know planets form much later in the in the process of uh, stud, of the whole evolutionary sequence and uh, theoretically, uh, the problem is quite challenging and because of the same reasons I mentioned before. There are all these different uh, things going on and there are all these complex levels of interaction. So I think that, uh, you know, sort of as, as uh, maybe as, you know, we get computational progress increases, you know, we can um, get towards simulating these things much more. But um, there's actually really quite a lot of work to be done. And I don't know if we will have all the answers uh, to the questions we have even now in 40 years. So, yeah. Um, it's, it's an honor to get a recognition like that, I think, and, you know, I'm uh, really proud of it. And I think, um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's nice to be able, it's nice to be recognized for the work that you do and to be singled out, especially in the SETI Institute. I mean, there are so many people doing such fabulous work and, you know, it's, it's, it's indeed a great honor to be recognized like that.